Hey guys, it's me, Halloween Dan. Today we're doing something I've been talking about in my last few videos that I've been wanting to do. I do it every year, but I never really go full in on it, but I should do more than spend so much money. Um, this time I'm going to be making some things. Ooh. Today I'm going to be making some tombstones. My own sort of more, slightly more realistic than the foam ones you see in the shops kind of tombstones. Uh, some with funny messages on. I quite like the quirky kind of me messages you get on some of them. And this sort of video was inspired by, I'd seen videos done by Wicked Makers who in turn were inspired by Van Oaks Props who make really realistic looking Halloween props mainly. Um, I'll leave the link to their channels in the description and I like some of the techniques they use so I have tried them. I've done a little practice one. So join me while we have a go at this. So today I'm going to show you how to take a piece of insulation foam like this and turn it, hopefully, into something like this. This is my first attempt at a slightly more realistic tombstone. I hope you like it, I'm quite proud of it. But I think I missed a few of the techniques that um, Wicked Makers and Van Oates props have used. And I think I could have made it look even better if I'd have really tried. I think as well I went a bit over the top on the writing actually. I think the, the more simple the, the name and all the rest of it, the better. As you can see, I went for the old Noah Escape. Here lies Noah Escape, 1643 to 1693. That is also the year the witches from Hocus Pocus are hanged. <laughs> he always felt trapped. These, this is something you'll see a million times over. People have used this name because it's just kind of funny. Um, and I thought, for my practice one, that's where I'm gonna go with this. So let's get into some of the techniques that help bring this thing together. So the insulation board itself, um, I got from B&Q. It was £6.25 a board, so I got four, so all together that's £25. And then apart from that itself, this tombstone hasn't cost me anything else. Oh no, sorry, I did also buy some oldie English stencils uh, to help do the writing. Though actually the larger lettering of the name, Noah Escape, I actually had to kind of hand do because the, uh, because the lettering is actually a lot smaller than that. The first thing you have to do with this insulation board is take off this silver coating. You can't do anything with this silver coating. So that's what I'm gonna do now. So now we've got that foil taken off. You can see what we're left with. You've got these weird stripes on the back, so that's not the side I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using this slightly more smooth side. You will notice there are some pop marks where basically the, um, foil, the foil kind of rips away some of the foam as you're trying to strip it off. But to be quite honest with you, it just makes it look slightly more textured anyway. It gives it a kind of a, we're going for the sort of broken, ruined kind of old tombstone look anyway. So all these dents and cuts and marks don't really damage it that much. It just kind of adds to the overall look. So without any further ado, let's start drawing out the shape of our tombstone. So at this point, I just kind of freehanded the design of the tombstone. I could have been more accurate if I'd have tried, but I just kind of wanted for a bit of a wonky tombstone shape, like the general look of this, and went for it. So here's my basic shape. It isn't perfect. Uh, it's not exactly um, level, I suppose. I think it looks a bit sort of skew if It's leaning more to one side than the other. But hey, you know what? It's supposed to look like a ruined, old, crooked, ancient tombstone anyway. So it doesn't really matter that it's not perfect. Um, and like I say, a lot of the sort of rough edges, basically because I'm only using a bit a normal Stanley knife, um, here's my Stanley knife, um, instead of a long bladed one, it doesn't get all the way through the foam. So yes, I know, I should have bought a long bladed Stanley knife, but, it still gets most of the way through the foam, and once you've made a mark, the rest kind of snaps away quite nicely, more or less, oops, 
there goes Hogwarts. Um, and anything else that needs trimming off just trims off very easily. And if a bit breaks away, you know what? It kind of looks like a bit of stone's fallen off. It acts to the effect. And later on, I'll rough up all these edges anyway. So it'll look great anyway. So now it's time to add the lettering. So I've now put in my lettering, uh, what I wanted it to say. It isn't perfect, it is a bit wonky. I think it's leaning a bit to one side and I, I basically cut the, the tombstone a bit off center so the lines aren't quite right. But you know what, again, it doesn't really matter. Some people, if you're a perfectionist out there, I'm sorry, I'm not a perfectionist. To me, it's a creepy old tombstone. As long as it maybe makes someone smile and it kind of, looks like a creepy old tombstone that's all that really matters to me so i've gone for here lies poor i'm a goner 1712 to 1748 i told thee i was ill so that's just a you know that's me all over something a bit silly now for the really laborious hard bit i now have to carve out all these letters now, if you have a little multi-tool, something like a Dremel, um, it makes the job a lot easier as long as you have the perfect tools, if you've got the little router bits and all the rest of it. Because I've chosen old English lettering as well, I'm not quite so sure how easy it would be to use a little Dremel on lettering of this nature. I, because I haven't got a Dremel, I'm back to my trusty old Stanley knife. Um, very, very laborious. If you don't try this at home. The blade is very sharp, but um, it takes ages. So I won't bore you with the details of me carving out these letters. I'll just show you what it looks like once I'm done. This is me just showing uh, me putting on the base, what I did to the base. I sprayed it with some water, put down some Gorilla Glue. The water helps the Gorilla Glue to really get sticky. I put some toothpicks into the other side of the tombstone and then I stuck them together and they actually hold really well like this. Okay, so here's where we're up to. Um, I've got a base glued on. We've roughed up the base as well. Uh, you can see I've roughed up all the edges around the ed outer edge of the tombstone as well. Give it a kind of a cracked, broken sort of look. We've added a few uh, cracks here and there. Uh, I put this sort of school motif at the top. Uh, a few more cracks down the side. There's no real wrong or right way of doing this. I always sort of cut into it quite harshly with the knife and then kind of add these sort of V formations, sort of cracking out um, from there. But um, like I say, you can kind of do it however you want. You can add as few or as many as you like. You can take out great big chunks if you really want to. So as you can see from this burn mark, <laughs> I tried to use a heat gun to give it sort of a more bubbled effect, give it a bit more of a stone effect, but it didn't really work. It must be a different kind of foam to what I've seen in past videos. So instead, I'm just going to paint this with the same sort of um, finish that I used uh, for the first stone I did and see how this one turns out. So I've mixed up some grey paint with a bit of white paint to lighten it and I've added some sand, a few scoopfuls of sand, just to try and give it a bit of a stone texture. See how this ends up looking at the end. So it's all painted up now. Um, I think I'll probably have to put on another coat uh, once it's dry, but as you can see, it completely transforms it, makes it look quite cool. You can already see some of the sort of stony effect that the sand in the paint gives it. Um, don't worry if at this point you lose some of the detail of the lettering and the cracks and like likewise because the final step adding the details you'll get all that back and you'll also give it less of a sort of brand new you know stone look and more of a sort of aged weathered look um, so that's what we'll do once this bad boy is dry and it's got a second coat so this is one of the slightly more fun bits now we get to sort of add a bit of color <clears throat> to give the stones some sort of more realistic look. Uh, there's no real way of doing this. You just kind of slap it on, make it sort of look like 
age and time of war away and sort of giving them a kind of dirty, mossy kind of look. So I've got some paint that I've walked down. This is acrylic paint. And I just take it, put it down, so it's splash on. So here you'll see me sort of just adding a few layers of paint uh, and just kind of applying it liberally. There's not really an official way of doing this. You don't have to worry as well. At this point, you can start to think, oh God, I've ruined this now. It's dripping all over the place. It looks like a right mess. But trust me, after a few applications, it'll start to look perfectly fine. It'll, uh, if you get all in the, I like to get in all the little nooks and crannies. So here I'm like trying to get in the details of the skull at the top. Um, it's nice to try and um, get into all the lettering too. It looks like build up a dirt has sort of built up in those letters and in that, in those details and it's kind of dripped out over time. So that in itself kind of adds a layer of extra detail to, to the stone kind of makes it look more real anyway. I'm just kind of doing it across the whole stone here. I've sped this part up so you can see me doing it a bit quicker. And I just kind of layer it on. It does make the stone look a lot darker, but it really adds a good effect. Here now I'm adding some green. I try not to add too much of the green because it's just like an algae kind of look. You just want to kind of add uh, a thin coating on here and there. I like to put a bit around the base as well because it does, that's where algae would naturally accumulate um, so it gives it this kind of aged weathered been out in all weathers and algae started to grow and um, mosses and lichens and all that kind of stuff uh, and then the final sort of step is after i've covered all the surfaces i want with the green is then i usually get um, some brown so uh, i'll apply just a very very small amount of brown paint uh, this is me doing it now um, just here and there, it drips down, it adds just this extra sort of la layer of colour. Now I'm just going to use a finer brush to add some detail into the areas that need it, like the cracks and the lettering, just to give it that extra stood out sort of appearance. Once again, I'm using acrylic paint to do this. So here's the finished uh, tombstone. As you can see, it looked very, very different from the piece of foam we started out with, with its silver coating. Um, I hope you'll agree, it definitely looks a lot more like what a tombstone should look like. Um, like you can see, a lot of the lettering and stuff, now that I've darkened and, and darkened the cracks, it all makes it look really kind of ancient and cracked and broken up. Um, really gives it a really cool effect, like I say, the kind of stone effect you get as well is kind of cool. You could go on forever when it comes to the painting, you could add more green, you could add more black, you could add more brown, you could add mosses and lichens and bird poo if you really wanted to go that deep. But for me this just looks like an old, weathered, broken old tombstone and just kind of looks really cool. They will be finding a home in my haunt this year. Um, probably, obviously, in the graveyard that I always do, the cemetery haunt that I always do. Uh, so we've got Noah Escape and I'm a goner. Um, hopefully they'll go down quite well with the people who come to see them. A bit close to the time when I'm actually doing my haunt and we're putting them outside, I'll show you how I'm planning to actually keep them in place because at the end of the day, these are pieces of foam. You know, they do not, the wind will blow them over. Um, so I'll have to figure out some way of really staking them down into the ground. But we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. I hope you've enjoyed my sort of tutorial of how to make a spooky, realistic tombstone. I'm sure people out there would be much better at doing it than I am. I just thought I'd show you that even a novice like me, who never, I've never made these ever before, can do it. So if I can do it, you can do it, anyone can do it. So anyway, on that note, Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please give us a like, please give us a subscribe, and I will see you for the next one. Keep it spooky. Bye.